Any of you who have been watching the channel since the beginning will probably be very aware of our problem in this building with the mortar. Just to be clear, it is not mortar between these stones. I would class this as concrete. I know in the past kind of people thought it should be easy to get this out, but this isn't like mortar between bricks on a normal brick wall where it's just a high sand, you know, maybe three to one, four to one, something like that sand to cement ratio. It's very heavy on the gravel, very heavy on cement and it's strong. So in the past we tried getting out with a hammer and chisel, we've tried a pneumatic needle on the air compressor, muriatic acid which we had mixed success with. This week what I'm going to try and do is use the angle grinder to get the worst of it out. I can then go through either with a hammer drill to get the rest of it out or with a hammer and chisel. I think once I've broken that seal of it, it should be much easier to get it off. is pressing on with the angle grinding I've got my own hot dirty job to get on with and I'm gonna need this I've never actually tried strimming before so I'm hoping that the anticipation of doing it is worse than the participation wish me luck Okay, so far, so good. Two things I've learned. Apparently, I like to clench my jaw when I'm strimming. And second of all, I've found out that this visor here has knobs on the side here to tighten it up. <laughs> the whole time it was just uh, banging down onto my chest. So yeah, Ricky, you forgot to mention that bit. I understand it's probably common sense. It's just me, I just didn't realize. Sorry, Ricky. This is Victoria's first time strimming. Normally it's one of those jobs that I do, but today we're trying to divide and conquer, tag team, get as much stuff done as possible. So yeah, I'm just gonna check in and just make sure she's doing okay. How are you getting on with it? It's not too heavy or? No, one thing though, this harness is not designed by a woman. <laughs> when <laughs> basically it just goes <laughs> But yeah, other than that, not too bad, not too bad, it's just, the heat that's all it is but i'd give it a solid four out of ten as far as farm job goes yeah although that harness is good for distributing the weight of the strimmer i know even for me it pulls on my chest and my shoulders and i haven't even got any padding yeah <laughs> man i'm so covered in sand oh and dirt and filth this process seems to be going quite well so far so I've done basically all of the back wall up to where the supports are for the ring beam form because I don't really want to disturb anywhere around there. The most uh, difficult thing about this job is that the concrete has just been kind of thrown like all over. It's not just in the joints, it's in the joints and then thrown all around it. And as a result, at certain points, it's really hard to see where one stone ends and where the next stone begins because it's spread so far. So there's a couple of times with this where once I've got kind of to a certain depth, I've clipped a stone, which I really don't want to do. I want to do everything to avoid damaging these stones. So off the back of that, I'm being a little bit more cautious and unless I can guarantee the path of where that mortar's going, then I'm just leaving it be and I'll have to come back with a hammer and chisel and just try it that way. So now I'm going to grab the hammer drill and I'm hoping that because I've weakened lots of these areas that's going to come out very easily famous last words Oh, 
Oh, I don't know if you guys can actually see how much I'm sweating here. It's insane. I've got sweat running into my mouth. I'm going to have to stop today. Good news is that it's working an absolute treat, which I am over the moon about. Even if we can't get it perfect in the end, this is a huge improvement. And if it wasn't for the scorching weather, it wouldn't be that hard of work. Just very dirty. <laughs> Ricky's just headed out to the city to get some materials. So while he's gone, I'm gonna try and tackle a little area that's been driving us mad because it's so messy as a surprise to Ricky. Who said romance is dead? So the area that I'm working on is just outside the door of the big house. And I've just realized that the spade and the wheelbarrow are down at the tiny house. So when you live on a farm, you never need to worry about hitting the gym. <laughs> Phase one is the clear up job. In amongst all of the rubble, I've actually come across quite a few nice pieces of slate, so I'm going to keep those safe for later. We get so many weeds coming through in this area, so I'm going to lay down some landscaping fabric before covering it over with a nice layer of gravel. I'm losing light, but there's just enough time to put these slates down. I actually can't remember if I said, but the intention with this area is to turn it into a lovely herb garden. And I'm thinking that these slates could be the perfect thing for plant pots to sit on top of. I don't know if any of you saw this where you live, but late last night, Victoria and I watched a massive meteor shower. I'm pretty sure it's visible from most places uh, in the world. Let me check with Victoria what the name of it was. Victoria, what was the name of the meteor shower? Perseid. Perseid meteor shower. It was magic. <laughs> <laughs> it was. So our little cottage has got three windows, which on a stone building of this size is actually really unusual. And it's definitely one of our favorite features. The one behind me just here is going to be our kitchen window. And from there, you can look all the way up the land. The windows are obviously in quite a state and we will be replacing them. But in the past, I don't know what they were thinking, but they've basically painted bright blue paint all over the window frames and also sadly all over the stonework surrounding it as well. So we're just trying to get the paint off, although we don't actually know what type of paint it is because it's painted onto the metal window frames, but it's also painted onto the door as well. So it could be metal paint or it could be wood paint or it could be something entirely different. So I've tried it with acetone and it is definitely breaking down the paint. However, actually getting off of the textured surface of the stone is proving difficult. So I'm just gonna go and grab some wire brushes and see if that'll do the job. 
because of the old window frames and they've basically just painted on and the brush has gone behind, we're not gonna be able to fully get it all off until the windows have been removed, which obviously we don't want to do now because it's gonna be a while until the new windows go in. But whilst we can't work on the roof because the ring beam is setting, we need to try and think ahead. We need to try and come up with some solutions now so we're not faced with it at the time. But one thing I will say being down here in the building and just looking around is how much I just cannot wait to get the ridge beam, the wall plates, the roof rafters up, actually get the roof structure up. It feels like it's been so long now <laughs> without a roof on this building. And yeah, once we start getting this covered and the building is watertight, it's just gonna be such an achievement and the first big milestone really on this project. We've actually planned a cheeky little getaway to France, just kind of for a long weekend once we finish the roof as you know, a celebration of achieving it, but also as a way to like reset a little bit before we move on to all the rest of the renovation. So yeah, we're going for a long weekend, gonna take the dogs. Very much looking forward to that as well. Whenever Victoria and I visit any country, we always love to be able to speak at least the basics. Now, I haven't spoken French in 20 years. Excusez-moi, où sont les toilettes, s'il vous plaît? Je suis désespéré. And that leads me to say thank you to Rosetta Stone for partnering with us and helping us learn French. So if you haven't heard of Rosetta Stone before, it's a language learning app. And unlike others where they rely on translations to teach you, this utilizes your kind of natural learning ability for language and it teaches you in a really immersive and intuitive way, very similar to how you learned your first language when you were younger. One of the best features about Rosetta Stone is that they have voice recognition and when you're speaking to it, it's listening to what you're saying, it's giving you instant feedback and it allows you to tweak your pronunciation until you get it sounding really good. Ka. So. So. There's a variety of subscription options, including a lifetime subscription, and that gives you access to learning 24 languages for life. Rosetta Stone are offering an exclusive discount to all of our subscribers. You can get up to 50% off of all of their different subscription options. And to make sure that you're satisfied with the service, they offer you a 30 day money back guarantee. Click our exclusive discount link in the description below to start learning a language today. Thanks again to Rosetta Stone for supporting us and our channel and for helping us in our language learning journey. I think I'd better head back down and see how Victoria's getting on. Any joy? A little. It is bringing it off, but it's just too textured. I bought this. Can I give that a go? Yeah, I suppose so. You haven't commented. I got distracted and cleaned the window. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, actually it looks nice now. sizzling. So I'm just mixing up some water and some bicarbonate of soda in another spray bottle and then we'll spray that on in about 10-ish minutes. That'll neutralize the acid and then we can give it a scrub and hopefully that's going to do a better job. So the muriatic acid has definitely worked better once it was brushed off a little bit with the wire brush, but it is gonna take a few more coats. So I think it's just down to the age of the paint, maybe because it's been baked on by the sun and it's also just applied really thickly. I'll be back to tackle you another day. Now that I've strimmed in the olive grove, it's clear to see just how much growth there is around the bottom of the trees. I'm going to remove all of the suckers because basically it's draining the energy from the rest of the tree and we want all of the energy going up into the tree so it can produce lots of juicy olives for us. When it comes to caring for the land and the trees that we've got, we basically look to the locals. What do they do? When do they do it? And how do they do it? So when I spoke to an experienced olive farmer and he said that he did his suckers in August, well, that was good enough for me. The 
The trees are absolutely laden with olives this year and I don't know if it's because spring was such a wet one but they're already so big and plump looking and they've still got three more months to grow until harvest. I've got these two pots of herbs, I've got them from the supermarket. I've got a mint and a parsley, looking a bit sad but it is a, quite a healthy plant. In fact there are actually about six or seven mini parsley plants in here so I'm going to pot them up into some bigger terracotta pots for the new herb garden area and with any luck in a few weeks time they're going to continue to grow and fill out those pots nicely. what we're making yeah the world's thickest skateboard the world's first wooden boom box <laughs> I haven't got any more have you got any <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, don't grab it unless you've got one ready because it slows it down oh I think we gave the game away already to be honest when you sat on it probably yeah <laughs> it's gonna be a swing <laughs> like you're on the mixing decks. <laughs> I want to put a beveled edge on these holes where the rope's gonna go through. Firstly, because it'll look nice. And secondly, I'm hoping that curve is gonna mean that the rope's gonna get less friction. The tricky thing is, with the router bit, the hole's so small that I can't actually see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna be doing this blind. Hopefully, I don't mess it up. to get any splinters in your backside sitting on here it's so smooth after the sanding and making those round edges has just given it a really nice finish so I'm just going to give it a quick wipe over with this damp cloth before giving it a couple of coats of varnish One of our favourite aspects of the property is all of the mature oak trees that we've got and this one is the biggest of the bunch. It was going to be our preferred option for the tree swing, however we've run into a couple of issues with that. We're currently stood on a big granite mound underneath the tree and wherever we could find a suitable limb to suspend the ropes from, Basically, as you swung, you were going to be colliding with the granite, so obviously that's less than ideal second problem currently we have hornets 
feasting on the sap and they're extremely aggressive and territorial so two very good reasons to not choose this tree. <laughs> We think we've got one that's suitable. It's a bit further down, it's right by the greenhouse, which is a nice little spot. Somebody can be sitting on it swinging whilst the other person is watering all the plants. It's also got lots of shade from all the leaves during the summer, which is good. It's just made me think actually coming down here, Ricky mentioned something to me the other day and I didn't actually realise that Poppy's made a new collection. She is basically a little doggy magpie. She likes to collect various bits and bobs from around the land. Random bits of rubber, old soles of a shoe, uh, various twigs and sticks. They're like her little treasures and basically she will take it in turns, go and select one from the pile, whip it around the land and return it before selecting her next one and this collection has grown over several days and it's now made up of about nine or ten things so yeah a little bit different in habits to Ted because when we actually adopted him the adoption agency explained to us that as well as not understanding English sadly he actually didn't know how to play with a toy he didn't really know how to play at all he'd only been on the streets and then straight into kennels so between the two different dogs two very different types of behaviour. I should add that Ted, since we've had him, has definitely learned English and also definitely learned how to play with a toy, especially when food's involved. Is that a big enough tail? done it. Yeah, my loop's a bit bigger than the lady on the internet, but I think it should do the job. And what's this knot called? <laughs> Double bowline. Bowline. Bowline, bowline. Right, that's solid. Do you want to pass me the second one? The royal throne. <laughs> Look at the size of it. Now comes the tricky part of actually getting the ropes equal so the seat's nice and level. Okay, can you pull the rope tight? Is that tight enough? Yeah. You can do it. I'm not confident. From your perspective, does that look about equal height-wise? Yes. Who's going to be the guinea pig? You can if you like. <laughs> <laughs> You're gearing yourself yeah. up. <laughs> I'm just trying to see how much it's going to move for. Oh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Is it taking you? Oh! <laughs> Taking you out now. Yeah. <laughs> it swings. <laughs> it's swinging a bit unevenly. Okay. I don't know if we've not levelled it, but. To the left or the right? <laughs> oh, this You're is fun. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I can't reach the floor like you could to start yourself off. You just got to keep the going, there you go. Yeah, the rope should stretch though with a few more swings. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, it's dropped on yeah, that side. One. Yeah. I'm Give it a bit of an adjustment. We'll be swinging into next week. <laughs> <laughs> so 
was fun. Whee! <laughs> Let it be said, you are never too old to enjoy a good old swing. Unsure. Unsure. <laughs> I don't think she loves it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so dignified. <laughs>